By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have, oof, we have something special. We are going to open up an Antiquities Booster as part of the Robin's Vault series. We're now at episode number six, the last episode. So this is the last booster pack that Robin will crack here on the channel. Now, if you've missed any of the other previous episodes, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now. That'll take you to a playlist where you can go and start at episode one and work your way through to this episode, episode number six. So we're opening a booster pack of antiquities, but let's first take a quick look at this set. Antiquities is a set that was released in March of 1994. And one thing I want to say before I go and look at the cards is that it was the first set that had a coherent storyline and where the cards also connected to the storyline. So it was really a complete package and in this case it was about the brothers war ursa and mishra and the most valuable card of the set is named after one of those two brothers it's mishra's workshop it's an artifact land and you can tap it for three colorless mana but you can only spend that to cast artifacts so it's incredibly powerful it doesn't even come into play tapped it's just ridiculously strong and antiquities in general will probably be remembered most by the very strong uh, lands in the set so mishra's factory is probably the strongest man land and kind of brought the term man land into the game because it was the first land that you can actually turn into a creature and it's it's just crazy good and then you've got strip mine which is really a card that you still see today it's being used all the time i mean again it comes into play untapped and you can just get rid of any land any land it's incredibly strong and then of course you've got the urzatron the urza lands Urza's Tower is the one I've mentioned here, but Urza Land is a combination of three different lands, Urza's Tower, Urza's Mine, and Urza's Power Plant. And when you have all three, something special happens. They don't produce just one colorless mana. No, the Urza Tower produces three, and the Urza's Mine and the Urza's Power Plant produce two each. So as you can imagine, you can do some really crazy stuff with that kind of amount of mana. So if you can find a way to just quickly get those three lands into play, I mean, you can do some really cool things. And of course, we're now all aware of the Tron decks in competitive magic. Um, and then there's another card I want to mention here. And it's actually not the Candelabra of Tanis, which maybe also deserves a mention. But, you know, I want to focus here on Millstone for a moment. This is actually the first card that gave players the possibility to mill. Um, you know, milling is a term that we use now all the time. And in which, with which we mean I'm going to mill you or Today, you, maybe you want to mill yourself more with all the reanimator tactics in the modern magic. Uh, but milling means that you take cards from somebody's deck and you put them in the graveyard. And Millstone was the first card that actually could do this um, repeatedly and that really focused on this tactic, the first artifact. Because I'm not also thinking of Bazaar of Baghdad, but you can only use Bazaar of Baghdad for yourself. With Millstone, you could also mill an opponent's uh, deck which at the time was very popular when it first came out people really thought including me that wow this card is really overpowered this is super strong i can just mill cards basically destroy cards of my opponent's deck and it took a while before we realized that millstone is not that powerful it's still a very cool card but it's not that powerful as we as we thought at the time uh the set itself only has a hundred cards in it and interesting to know is that um, when this uh, was released, when Antiquities was released, if you would buy a booster box, the booster box was sorted in a way that you could never have the whole set complete after just buying one booster box. So you had to buy multiple booster box boxes. So can you imagine opening a whole booster box of Antiquities and not finding a Mishra's workshop? I mean, that must be frustrating. Um, anyway, this is what I'd like to share with you with Antiquities. Now let's quickly go to the opening of the booster pack. So there we go. Exciting to see what will be in this pack. I've never been at an actual opening of this. So this is for me a first time here as well. This is Robin taking it out of the frame. Now I fast forwarded it a little bit because it took uh, a while to take it out. And here is the actual booster pack. Let's look at the story. What does it say? Long ago, two wizards battled for control of Dominia. Now Antiquities unearths the relics of this ancient rivalry, over 75 artifacts and spells that shaped the five magics and altered Dominia forever. Antiquities does not stand alone. You must have Magic the Gathering to play. Okay, so they're explaining it's not a standalone set. It's an expansion set. 
And Dominia is the old name of Dominaria. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the original audio. So you probably will hear some Dutch and you'll hear just the authentic responses here and not my voice over. So enjoy this opening of Antiquities. Yeah. Hey. That's not bad. Oh, that's not sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's not sure. Yeah, and that this Ashnot also will be an income. Ashnot. Better gear, is it? Ja, Oké, okay. oh, jammer. Dit zijn de uncommons. Ja. Dat zijn uncommons. Dus ja, dit zou kunnen. Zou kunnen, zou kunnen wie weet. Oh, Goed. kijk. Tormandje. Heel, Heel gaaf. Fijn. Ja. Heel mooi uit. Oh. Ja, gremlins. Correction gremlins. Dat is mooi. Ja. Die art is ook heel mooi. De enige gremlins in het spel volgens mij. Oké. Okay. Jochen Soldier. Dragon Engine. Artifact Ward. Dat is ook een common. Zoeken. Ja, ik kan En Agosian Pixies. Whoa, what a crazy booster pack opening. Finding those two cards flipped, like I remember when I saw that, it caught me completely off guard. And you could hear me say, oh, I, th I think they're common because I just wanted them to be common because they're not the uncommons uh, that you hope for when you're opening an Antiquities booster pack. But they're still really cool cards. I mean, look at the art of Ashnaut's Battle Gear and also the text. Uh, the flavor text there, this horrid invention clearly illustrates why Mishra's lieutenant was feared as much by her troops as by her foes. Because you have to, you know, th that text alone gives you this whole image that your lieutenant comes up to you and says you have to wear this, this battle gear. And you're like, oh, this is probably going to kill me. And you know what? It probably will because it's plus two, but also minus two on your toughness. So it's it's something that you ask for when you're in that army, and also the Onulet's quite nice. Um, it is it is a table, it is a machine, and it gives you life when it dies a two two creature. Now the most valuable card of this pack is actually the Urza's Mine. I mean a minty fresh Urza land. You know Urza obviously being played still in the Tron decks today. So if you want to get that one, it's it's about 20 euros. So a very valuable card here. And I also wanted to um, talk a little bit about the Argovian Pixies because in the Old, old school, so really in, in 94 when this set got released, the Argovian Pixies didn't see a lot of play. Um, but all those, uh, all that changed actually now in the modern old school where Mishra's factories or so um, play such a big role. So this is a great card against those factories and actually a great card against all those artifact decks in general. So this card is, re is really seeing more play now um in 2020 than it did in 1994 so i mean that's that's pretty pretty interesting and then if we take a look at the other comments in the pack i think Phyrexian gremlins and artifact ward are quite nice because they're not reprinted and the art of gremlins is just too funny and then you have yoshin soldier which is this card with vigilance you don't have a lot of cards with vigilance in old school and i think it's, it's pretty solid three for a one four that four defense it can protect you against a lot of ground forces and the Dragon Engine is um, is a card that actually played a pretty big role in the Urza Saga, so in the in the original Brothers War story. Um, and I, I'm, I'm still hoping, whenever I play against a Power Artifact deck, I always hope that they don't have Fireball as a win con, but they have Dragon Engine as a win con. I know, I know it's ridiculous because, you know, it has so many flaws, but how cool is it to beat somebody down with a huge Dragon Engine? Preferably if you make it unblockable with Dwarven Warriors. I think if you can pull that off, so if somebody's listening and if somebody has any ambition to build a, a proper Timmy deck, maybe a Power Artifact, Basalt Monolith, Dragon Engine, and Dwarven Warriors. Just put that all together, and if you can pull it off, even if it's only once, that is going to be a lot of fun. So um, this was it. This was Robin's collection. This was Robin's vault. I would like to thank, first of all, Robin, thank you very much. You contacted me via Instagram and said, I want to open my collection. 
and would you be interested to film it? And, I, and first I asked what kind of collection and then you sent me that picture. Or I, I can't remember, did you send me a picture or did you just tell me what packs you have? Anyway, I was blown away when you said, yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got a pack of Legends, I've got a pack of Antiquities, I've got a pack of Revised, I've got a pack of... And I was like, okay, okay, well, when would you like to, uh, when would you like to visit? So thank you very much. I think you had some really nice pools and it's, it's really just cool to see somebody opening these booster packs because they're really part of magic history and it got it got it to it got the game to where it is today so it's it's, it's quite special and i'm still a big fan of where we were in 1994 you know <laughs> that's why i play old school magic of course but it's just great to see these packs being open and, and that i can just sit right next to you and and go through this whole experience so thank you very much for that and also thank you the viewer for watching this let me know if you'd like to see more booster openings you know, then I can always see are there any other people who want to open boosters and maybe I can ask them to do it on the channel or, you know, maybe I can I can look around and see if I can find some older boosters to open up. Anyway, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support Timmy Talks, if you want to support what I do, you can do so by liking this video, sharing this video on your socials, leaving a comment, always help. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And as you probably have noticed, we now also have a Patreon page. So you can also support me on Patreon. There's probably an info card appearing right now. And talking about Patreon, let's go to the end scroll and um, thank the patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee.